The concept of environmental sustainability, as you all may know, is a longer term maintenance of ecosystem components and a function for future generations. It's also the meeting, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation. It is the issue of keeping environmental impacts below the level required to allow affected system for recover and continue evolve. It's also the assessment that a project's output can be produced without permanent and unacceptable change in the natural environment. Environmental challenge in general, the land degradation and the deforestation, which leads to the food security challenge. Protection and the sustainable use of forest, effective management and the protection of biodiversity. Water management and scarcity. Decreasing rainfall and the high dependence on groundwater. Land, air, and water pollution. The MDG7 challenge in Africa. There are various challenges. For instance, minimizing effect of pollutants that need to be overcome. Ensuring efficient utilization of land and the consumption of natural resources. Containing congestion in urban areas and the problems of transportation. Waste disposal. The provision of social services. These are the major challenges that MDG 7 may not be achieved. Urban environmental challenges in Africa, particularly are the consequence of fast rate of urbanization, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, is now characterized by a number of emerging environmental challenges. Of particular concern is the urban areas are the risks of the immediate and the surrounding natural environment, and their resources, as well as health conditions of the citizens. Rapid urbanization growth has seriously outstripped the capacity of most cities to provide adequate housing and other basic services for their citizens. Yet each year, new migrants continue to flock to urban cities, urban centers. So the problem of sequestered settlements, shanty towns, and hampering the capability of capacity of local authorities to improve basic infrastructure and deliver essential services remain as disease. Urban waste management practices in Africa. Waste management practices in Africa. Waste management has been a challenge for municipalities and urban governments in developing world in general, where uh, we Africans are the hub, largely due to poor infrastructure, bureaucratic competence, <coughs> deprived public participation, and limited institutional capacity of the municipalities. Poor waste management practices in particular, widespread dumping of waste in water bodies, as may I show you later on on the one specific case study which uh, my colleague and I have conducted this year, and uncontrolled dump sites that aggravates the problems of uh, generally low sanitation levels across African continent. Urbanization is <coughs> on the rise in Africa. And this trend is expected to continue in the future. Of course, the inability of infrastructure and the land planning methods uh, to cope with urban growth, which is averagely 3.5% uh, per annum, is, is still the challenge. This is particularly urgent in slum areas, which uh, constitutes a big part of uh, many of cities and the towns in Africa. Waste management infrastructure is largely non-existent in rural areas of Africa. This is obvious. Improvements in infrastructure are urgently needed to combat the high cost of health services, and thereby elevate poverty and reduce rural, rural urban migration. 
still the gap between waste management policy and legislation and actual waste management practice is widening due to perennial capacity constraints and a lack of waste management facilities for various waste streams in Africa. Waste generation is expected to increase significantly as a result of industrialization, urbanization, modernization of agriculture in Africa. And this will further aggravate current uh, capacity constraints in waste management. Again, the fast uh, growing use of ICT, uh, relatively the new uh, phenomenon, and rapid turnover in technology, particularly computers, mobile gadgets, increasing a growing e-waste e -waste stream for which there is no waste management capacity yet. This leads to disposal of both e-waste and the municipal waste in the same dump site. So changing the lifestyle and the consumption pattern of the growing urban middle class in particular is increasing the complexity in the composition of waste streams in Africa. So implementation challenge and the constraints. <coughs> the single largest implementation challenge remains creating sufficient capacity for environmental sound management, including the, const uh, the constraints by access to finance and the technical know-how. The current bylaws in most Africa focuses on the responsibility for waste management to municipalities, which are often ill-equipped or inequipped to deal with the collection and disposal of the wastes. Such bylaws are now an uh, impediment in other, in other way around. They are impediment to um, investment in waste management by the private sectors. Private sectors are not widely uh, engaged in the waste management practices in African cities. Uh, the imports of second-hand computer goods and production and or import of substandard products are all contributing to a rapid increase in waste generation in Africa. So implementation or enforcement, implementation or enforcement of waste regulations and the conventions is severely constrained by the lack of good governance, transparency, prevalence of corruption in some cases, lack of awareness and appreciation of best practices for environmental sound management of wastes is a major concern. Therefore, paradigm shifts among communities and society at large is needed. The way forward, investment, involvement of the private sector is, is one way forward. The involvement of the private sector in partnership with local communities in soil waste management activities has created an employment and job opportunity for a substantial number of jobless city residents, many of whom were previously unemployed women or young stars. So income generation is another uh, way forward. Solid waste management activities have been serving as means of income generation for people. Income generation from waste related activities need to be recognized, formalized, and replicated. In this regard, the use of the term salvagers and instead of scavengers should be promoted to describe those involved in recovering reusable waste items. So refuse collection charges also. In some cities, a sound refuse collection system is in place and the service as a good source of income for city and municipal councils. It is found necessary to exchange knowledge and experience in Africa on successful experiences which can be replicated. Practical and attitudinal change is also one way forward. 
The manner in which solid waste was previously managed has changed. For example, uh, there are increasing signs of waste being segregated at source and to a large extent collected and stored in waste bins. Sorting is being done at the com communal waste collection points with notably recognized organized groups of people. So this is increasingly have the impact on people's attitude to solid waste in gradual, in gradually changing and they no longer regard solid waste as a menace. Rather, they consider it as a commercial good that can be used to generate income and elevate poverty. Uh, uh, dear participants, I would like to show you a live example on which my colleague and I have conducted in Jijiga uh, City, which is 600 kilometers away from Addis and the eastward. Uh, in this town, we can see these figures. Wastes are dumped in unauthorized areas without any, any, any selection. Mind you, this water is used by people where the waste is nearby. Look, waste living with res residences. This residential area. Look again. This is the area where the waste is finally dumped. An open, unfenced, which has no any protection. Even waste, in some cases, coming back to the town. This place is six kilometers away from the center of the town. West is coming back to the town by blowing windows. Africa shall be free from environmental challenge. Thank you very much. I'm done. I, I think you, you've been so, I don't know, for me, you are so general that I don't really know how to situate because uh, if, if I had uh, really, maybe you got a more proper case study in the Jijiga town and that. You see, the, the, the issue of urban waste is quite big. Uh, I come from a small town of about, a city of about 250, 300 people. Uh, last four years, we estimated waste generated per person to be around 1.2 kg per day. And that's a small city. Uh, and you can imagine the enormity of <clears throat> what turns out every day. Uh, I, I think, uh, let me just provide some solution from experience. Uh, if there's any area government has to hands off, is in the area of waste collection. Uh, government should take the passenger seats, governments all over the world, and allow the private sector drive it. Maybe charge some small licensing fee because the money accruing should go directly to the private sector to manage the vehicles, to pay the staff, to pick the garbage. While you government sits there, anybody that violates, you facilitate the process of taking the person to the sanitation court. Uh, I don't know the experience uh, in this town and, and all that, but I, I, I think from the private sector involvement that is on the side of business. Now, outside the side of business, uh, we attempted in this city I come from, although it's a faith project now, to form what we called neighborhood environmental committees. Within small, small areas, we <coughs> constituted some environmental vigilante who were voluntary, uh, they were volunteers, just see to it that we, we take charge of this process. So the private sector person picking the rubbish is linked to a particular environmental community. You also, though they are volunteers, you also find a way to service them and uh, try to make the process on. I, I think, uh, if, uh, I expected some case. So because the MDG 7, uh, even though, um, and I'm back to the point my colleague from Nigeria, my two colleagues were saying. You see, 
it boils back to this issue of this MDG formulation that our same leaders signed. But uh, looking at these urban issues, the, the tavern picture of Beijing, New York, they don't have picture of my small town like Makodi uh, that has its challenges. So the, the technologies that they adopt there, I may not be able to have the compacting machines this way. But I think uh, if, you, if you have some more practical case experiences of how this can work, uh, we appreciate I don't seem to quite see it in the paper. In case of Sudan, we have, uh, you know, in the Western Sudan, it is a huge area, rich of forests, rich of water. But unfortunately, we have the Chinese companies drilling oil, and there is a huge area of uh, drilling operation, petroleum operation. It is unsafe because of Chinese don't believe in safety. So now you know the area of Westos. Yeah, yeah, I think you have the same case in, in Nigeria because we are also operating uh, oil in Nigeria. I just want to mention this because this is, uh, you know, will make troubles in the future for the nature. You know, uh, operating uh, petroleum need uh, a lot of chemicals for drillings, and there is uh, big quantities of uh, of, of uh, <coughs> chemicals, waste. Maybe this is uh, more dangerous than this waste. I just want to mention about this. Thank you. Abancha from Nigeria. Well, I want to make some observation on your presentation. I followed you from the beginning to the end. I expected that after your research and assessment that you did in your town, you should be able to let not just show us pictures, but the indices um, you use in doing your assessment, the results you got, and the possible uh, recommendations that as to way out of that degradation that we have seen there. You'll be able to show us the pictures and show us that the waste is coming back to the city. Yes, we agree. That's what happens in most African cities. As an academician with a lot of research experience, we wanted, we expected that we would see the parameters you use, the techniques as you are just maybe trying to show us now, and how the outcome came and the way forward, because that is really what we are here for. How do we come out of this uh, urban waste management? That I really didn't get it from your presentation. And then, but I believe there are ways out. And as I'm not doing any research in that. I wouldn't know. Bonjour, les amis. OK. Quand j'ai lu le programme, j'ai été fort intéressé par beaucoup de sujets, mais spécifiquement le problème de l'environnement. Et quand je viens de suivre l'exposé de notre communicateur du jour, so when, uh, the, the et je me dis, c'est un professeur, c'est un professeur, et nous avons beaucoup plus les théories que les pratiques. Je suis d'accord avec mon collègue Raphaël qui avait parlé de pouvoir, si j'ai bien compris, c'est question de revoir des objectifs des millénaires spécifiquement en Afrique. Car il y a des pays en avance et des pays en retard. Ok, pour ce qui est du secteur de l'environnement dans la République démocratique du Congo, mon pays,
Oui, je veux montrer euh, le problème de l'environnement à deux étapes. Au niveau de la province où je suis député provincial, je suis presque le seul député qui parle de l'environnement. J'aime l'environnement. Dans l'arrière-province, nous avons un problème très sérieux parce que il y a, notre province est riche en minéraux. Nous avons de l'or, nous avons des diamants, nous avons des castérites, nous avons des, co des, des colombotantalites, nous avons des wolfram. Donc ce sont des produits-là qui sont dans la province. Et la manière d'extraire ces minéraux, c'est il y a deux manières. Donc il y a et la petite industrie et l'exploitation artisanale. Ok, les conséquences sont lesquelles Lorsqu'on crée de l'or d'un côté pour obtenir de l'argent et on détruit l'environnement de l'autre côté. Donc, il y a des montagnes qui s'écroulent, il y a des rivières qui perdent des lits. Et puis, il y a de l'eau transformée. Même les, les, les espèces halieutiques, les espèces végétales et les espèces animales, et c'est un peu de fuir l'eau. C'est un problème très sérieux. Toujours à l'intérieur, on met pour, pour obtenir des poissons, on met des produits toxiques dans l'eau. Et lorsque les gens en consomment, il y a des maladies qui naissent. Alors, nous sommes en train de nous demander qu'est-ce que nous pouvons faire pour essayer un peu de résoudre tous ces problèmes-là. Ça, c'est au niveau de la province. Au niveau de la ville, maintenant, parce que moi, je suis habitant de la province et en même temps habitant du capital, de la capitale. Vous rencontrez des immondistes partout. Des immondistes, ce sont des déchets. Oh, des déchets. Oui. Donc des, donc des sachets. Donc des sachets et des, des, des bouteilles comme ça partout, partout. Et la ville devient de plus en plus sale. Quelle solution, quelle solution trouver Alors, ma préoccupation demeure à trois niveaux. Est-ce que le professeur, notre communicateur de jour, notre facilitateur de jour, peut me parler d'une bonne gouvernance de l'environnement. Comment pouvons-nous gérer ces écosystèmes
Ok, écosystème. Ok, maintenant, quelle est la méthodologie à, donc à la sortie d'ici, lorsque je vais rentrer en RDC, chez moi dans la province, quelle est la méthodologie que je peux appliquer pour essayer un peu de sauver ces âmes humaines, ces espèces halieutiques, végétales et animales Merci pour l'attention. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your constructive comments. From the first comments, I made it general, lasting the shortage of time. And this is actually uh, the, the paper we did. It is in this town, in this location, we did the uh, urban soil waste assessment. And we have the findings uh, with figures and facts. <coughs> Here we can, we have had the estimation of the uh, waste weighting in KG, where collected every day from about this much households. Generally, the average estimated is about this per day per household, was generation is there. Yeah. Um, regarding the participation of the private sectors, one private sector is uh, attempting to uh, <coughs> participate in the waste management in the city, uh, getting, ag getting uh, contractual agreement with the urban municipalities. The other administrative issues that the government has been trying is uh, establishing the small uh, scale enterprises to collect this garbage from the communal collection to the final disposal. These attempts are there, the, the, the promising attempts really. Regarding the good governance uh, on the ecosystem, the, when I take the case of Ethiopia, <coughs> Ethiopia has recently uh, established the Ministry of uh, Environment and Forest, which is aggressively looking for the uh, climate resilient economic growth. And in Ethiopia, there is a good experience of watershed management in everywhere. It can be exemplified in every hills and uh, mountains of Ethiopia. It can be uh, realized there. One can see there. Maybe regarding the professorship of mine, is, it is uh, a matter of the organizing uh, committee that they named me as a professor. I'm Mr. Ganamo Barisa. I did my MSCC in GIS in environmental science. In Ethiopia, no one can consider me as a professor or a doctor. Okay, so sorry yeah. For <laughs> I can accept. I'm. Uh, okay. I'm not senior. I'm junior researcher. Okay. Yeah. So sorry for the that is it. I accept. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will attend that.